Hi everyone, I'm Ivan, a software engineer on the Android Studio team, and I'm joined today by Scott, who is also an engineer on the Android Studio team. We're going to talk about how you can benefit from the latest changes in Android Gradle Plugin 7.0 in order to improve your build. We're going to talk about the performance improvements in AGP, steps required to benefit from Gradle Configuration Cache, and how you can extend AGP using the APIs we added in 7.0. Let's start with the performance improvements. Kotlin Symbol Processing, KSP, brings first-class support for annotation processing for Kotlin, replacing KPT. Using KSP benefits build speed as annotation processors can run up to two times faster compared to KPT. There are already popular annotation processors that offer KSP-compatible versions, such as Room and Moshi, with more coming. If all of the annotation processors that you use support KSP, make sure to migrate from KPT Gradle plugin to KSP Gradle plugin. To learn more, please visit this link. With non-transitive R classes enabled, R class includes only the resources declared in the subproject itself and none from its dependencies, thereby reducing the size of the R class for that subproject. The scenario where this is very helpful is when you add a new resource in a runtime dependency, because we are now able to avoid recompiling downstream modules. This incremental scenario improves by 40% with non-transitive R classes enabled. For clean builds, we are seeing 5 to 10% improvement. You can add this flag in your gradle.properties file, but we've also added refactoring help in Arctic Fox. You can run refactor, migrate to non-transitive R classes from the IDE, which adds the right flag to your build and modify sources, if needed. Android X libraries are already using this feature, and the AAR's day ship do not contain resources from transitive dependencies anymore. There have been several recent Lint performance improvements. Since AGP 7.0, Lint tasks can be up to date, and Lint analysis tasks can now run in parallel per module when check dependencies is set to true. Since AGP 7.1 Alpha 13, the Lint analysis task is compatible with the Gradle build cache. To demonstrate the performance improvements, we ran Lint on a project with 15 modules, with check dependencies set to true and Gradle caching enabled. As shown here, we see about a two times improvement from AGP 4.2 with an even more dramatic improvement in AGP 7.1 when all the Lint analysis tasks have cache hits. You might see Lint performance improvements without any action on your part after updating AGP, but there are some simple things you can try to further improve Lint's performance. To benefit from the Lint analysis task being cacheable, you'll need to have the Gradle build cache enabled. You can enable the build cache by adding this flag to your gradle.properties file. Please see this link for some caveats to consider when enabling the Gradle build cache. Another action item is to try the performance tuning in the Android Lint user guide including making sure you've given Lint enough memory. The final action item is to try setting check dependencies to true in your application Lint options block. This won't make Lint run faster, but it will allow Lint to catch more issues and will produce a single Lint report for your entire project. Now, let's talk about Gradle configuration cache. At the beginning of every build, Gradle creates a task graph which is used to execute build operations. We call this configuration phase, and it may take from a couple of seconds to tens of seconds. Configuration cache is a Gradle feature that allows caching the output of the configuration phase of the build and reusing that state in subsequent builds. When there is a configuration cache hit, all tasks run in parallel and dependency resolution results are cached, resulting in further improvements. Please note that this is different from the Gradle build cache, which is used to cache task output. Your build setup fully defines the result of configuration phase of the build. Configuration cache captures those inputs, for example, Gradle properties and the content of your build files. This, together with the tasks you requested to run, uniquely determines the tasks you'll execute in the build. To illustrate the improvements this feature provides, let's take a look at a Gradle build with 24 subprojects using the latest versions of Kotlin, Gradle, and AGP. You can see three different scenarios, clean build, incremental build that adds a public method, and incremental build that modifies method body. In all scenarios, we are seeing 20% build speed improvement. Let's take a closer look at how configuration cache works. Before the task graph is computed, we are in the configuration phase. We are using Gradle provided global objects, such as project, task container, configuration container, to create tasks with declared inputs and outputs, as in this example, where we register a task and configure it. 
In this script, we can see multiple usages of global objects like project.tasks and project.configurations. That's perfectly fine as we are still configuring the build. Once all tasks are fully configured, Gradle computes the final task graph. Configuration cache stores this task graph and it serializes the task state and saves it in cache. All task inputs need to be of specific Gradle types or serializable. Finally, when there is a configuration cache hit, stored configuration cache entries are used to create task instances. Only state that has been previously serialized can be referenced in the newly instantiated tasks, and no references to global state are allowed. To check if your build is compatible with configuration cache, in Arctic Fox, we added a build analyzer check. After the build, open the build analyzer panel, and you will see how long build configuration takes. In this example, it is 9.8 seconds. Click Optimize this link, and it will take you to another panel that has more detailed information. In this particular example, all plugins are already compatible, and clicking Try Configuration Cache in a Build starts a flow after which my Gradle.properties file was updated and a flag to enable Configuration Cache was added. Build Analyzer may also suggest updating the plugins to a newer version that is compatible with Configuration Cache. In case your build is incompatible with Configuration Cache, Build will fail, and debugging information will be provided. Let's take a look at the following incompatible example. Here, we have a task that computes current git SHA and writes it to an output file. It runs the git command, captures its output, and writes the value to a file. Running the task with configuration cache enabled shows two configuration cache problems. When your build is incompatible with configuration cache, Gradle will generate an HTML file which contains a list of issues with more information. If we open the HTML report, we can see stack traces pointing to the issues. In this case, they point to lines 5 and 11 in the build script. Going back to the task source, we can see that we have project access in the function that returns the file output location. That's the first reported issue. The second issue is usage of project in the task action. This is the global state that we cannot access with configuration cache enabled. Let's see how we can fix this. We can store pieces of information that we need in task properties, and those will be stored in the configuration cache. Also, we can rely on Gradle injected services that allow us to execute external processes. Here is a version of the task that is compatible with configuration cache. We captured the output location in a property that we configured during task registration and the injected Gradle service is used to launch the git command. This is how we can use the new task in our build. The output location is set during task registration. As a plus, Gradle lazy properties are live, and any changes to the project build directory will be automatically reflected in the output location of the task. To learn more about configuration cache, please check out Gradle documentation and this article which describes how to migrate your build. Thanks, Ivan. Now we'll take a look at extending the Android Gradle plugin. Many of you have probably wanted your build to do something that wasn't supported by AGP out of the box. In this section, we'll discuss the new variant and artifact APIs we've added to help you modify your build safely. Before diving into the variant and artifact APIs, let's clarify what variant and artifact mean. Build types and product flavors should be familiar concepts to you from your build.gradle files. AGP creates variant objects from these build types and product flavors, and for each variant, AGP produces variant-specific tasks. The outputs of these tasks are registered as artifacts of the corresponding variant. Most of these intermediate artifacts are private, but some are now public. Previous versions of AGP allowed API access to its tasks, but this was brittle because the tasks are an implementation detail and subject to change. AGP 7.0 instead allows API access to the variant object and some intermediate artifacts to allow users to influence the build's behavior without touching the tasks. Now we'll walk through the details of an example project using the new variant and artifact APIs to modify an intermediate artifact, add a custom element to the DSL, and add a custom property to the variant API. We'll be working in the build source directory to create a custom Gradle plugin which accomplishes these goals. The source code for this toy project is compatible with AGP 7.1 Beta 1 and is available at this link. First, we'll focus on modifying an intermediate artifact. Specifically, we'll add an extra asset to the APK by modifying the assets artifact. To achieve this, we'll first need a custom task like the add asset task shown here. 
This task has a single string input and a single directory property output. The task writes the input string to a file in the output directory. Using the variant and artifact APIs, we register an instance of our add asset task and wire it to the assets artifact. That's all that's required to get the extra asset into the APK. This block of code is the key. It adds the task's output directory to the collection of asset directories and wires the task dependencies properly. As it's written here, we're hard coding the content of the extra asset. But in later slides, we'll change this behavior to allow us to set this content per variant. AGP now allows users to interact with several different intermediate artifacts, some of which are shown here. In our toy example, we appended to the assets artifact, but AGP supports interacting with these artifacts in several other ways. For example, you might want to verify the contents of one of these artifacts, which you can do by getting the artifact, as shown here for the AAR artifact. For more ideas and examples of how to interact with these intermediate artifacts, please check out the new APIs in the Android Gradle plugin blog post on Medium. Getting back to our toy project, now we'd like to add some DSL to allow us to set the content of the extra asset. AGP has recently added the ability to add DSL for a custom plugin to AGP's existing DSL. We'll use this feature to allow setting the content of the extra asset per build type. This slide shows how we will be able to use our custom DSL in a module's build.gradle file. Notice how the toy DSL blends in with AGP's existing DSL. To extend AGP's DSL, we first need to create a simple interface like the one shown here. We can name this interface whatever we like. We'll call it toy extension. Once we have our interface, we can add it to AGP's build type DSL with the code shown here. We can extend the product flavors in a similar way, but we won't do it in this example. Now that we've added the custom DSL, we want to get its value in the on variance block so we can set the task input with the value. First, we look up the custom toy extension that we added previously using the variance build type. Next, we get the value from the DSL or use a default value if it hasn't been set in the DSL. Finally, we register our task and set its content input with the value from our custom DSL. And now the extra asset will get its content from our custom DSL. Similar to extending the DSL, you can also now extend the variant API by adding your own Gradle property or provider to AGP's variant object. But why would you want to do this? Extending the variant API offers some advantages over just extending the DSL. First, unlike DSL values, custom variant properties can be set with the output of a task, with all task dependencies handled automatically by Gradle. Second, with a custom variant property, it's easy to set it with a unique value per variant. And third, compared to custom DSL, custom variant properties allow for easier and more robust interactions with other plugins. Similar to extending the DSL, to extend the variant API, we first need to create a simple interface, like the one shown here. We'll call this one toy variant extension. Comparing it with our toy extension, You'll notice that we're using a provider instead of a nullable string. This is intentional, and it's the convention that we use internally in AGP. Using a provider allows the value to be set using the output of a task. It also removes the complexity of having to consider plugin ordering. Other plugins can set the value whether they're applied before or after our toy plugin. This slide shows how we will be able to use our custom variant API in a module's build.gradle file. The usage doesn't look as clean as our custom DSL, but here we see that setting a unique value per variant is easier with custom variant API compared to custom DSL. Implementing this variant API extension in our toy plugin will require code like this in the before variants block. In this block, we're creating an instance of our toy variant extension, setting its provider initially with the value from our toy DSL, and then registering it with AGP's variant object. This must be done in the before variants block, not the on variants block. We cannot register variant extensions in the on variants block. They must be registered in the before variants block in order to be available to any plugin that might access them in the on variants block. Similar to a previous slide, we look up the value from the custom toy DSL. We can do this safely in the before variants block because the DSL is guaranteed to be finalized and locked when the before variants callback is called. We initially set our custom variant property with the DSL value or default value if it's unset in the DSL. This is an important point because it's the same convention we use internally in AGP. 
Finally, we add our custom toy variant extension to the variant object via the register extension method. After all that work in the before variants block, we don't have much to do in the on variants block to set our tasks input with our custom variant property. This is a good illustration of why adding such a custom variant property is a good idea if you have multiple Gradle plugins that need to interact in a variant specific way. If another Gradle plugin wants to set your custom variant property or use it for one of its tasks, then it would only need to do something similar to what's shown in this on variants block. To learn more about extending AGP, please check out this new post on the subject. Also, please take a look at the continually updated AGP cookbook on GitHub to see more examples. There are more build and sync improvements on the way in the near future. Gradle Project Isolation is a feature that builds on top of configuration cache in order to provide more build speed and sync time improvements. Each project is configured in isolation, and no cross-project references are allowed. This allows Gradle to cache sync outputs per project, and if a build file changes, only the impacted project is reconfigured. The feature is currently under development. You can try it out with this flag using Gradle 7.2. Please continue following Gradle release notes for more updates. We are also working with JetBrains to improve Kotlin incremental compilation with the goal of supporting all incremental scenarios. For example, editing Android resources, adding external dependencies, or modifying non-Kotlin upstream subprojects. Thanks to you, the developers, for all of your support. Thanks for trying our preview versions and filing issues on our issue tracker. Please keep up the great work and let us know how we can help. Thank you.